Steamies, I'm back again. Because I had done a ranking video of all of the relevant characters from the classic era of Thomas and Friends, I decided to look into how many characters were introduced in the hit era. This is my ranking video of all the characters that were introduced in the hit era of Thomas and Friends. Once again, these are all my own personal opinions. Your list will be different than mine, and it's the one thing that makes the Thomas fandom so unique. Let me know in the comments what your list is. All I ask is that you be respectful, and above all, enjoy the video. Okay, let's dive in. Number 17, Colin. The fact that I completely forgot about this character and I'm having to do a voice recording in the 11th hour shows why he's at number 17. He had no impact, he did have dialogue, but he just was there as a plot device for a pointless story. Sorry guys. Number 16, Flora. She had no lines of dialogue and literally just followed Thomas around for the whole episode. It is the worst example of how to introduce a character in any form of media. And it also adds into the much held debate of Thomas and Friends being sexist. Number 15, Neville. A lot of people love Neville. I love the design of Neville. I love the idea of Neville, but he had four lines of dialogue and he didn't contribute anything. I'm sorry guys, especially to the yellow striker. He loves Neville. He has a great video on him and I recommend you check it out. But when you're tallying it up in the ways that I'm tallying it up, he didn't have that much of an impact. But there's a lot of fan media that does him justice. Number 14, Jeremy. Bland, generic. They try and give Jeremy and Thomas the same type of thing as Percy and Harold, but it doesn't work. There is no chemistry there. Jeremy just has no point to him at all. He's only there because they created the Sodor Airport in Calling All Engines. Number 13, Billy. In terms of his mark on the fandom, he has made a mark, but not in a good way. I personally don't mind him, considering I'm just about to jump into the Sharon Miller era and I already know about Charlie. And in terms of a story, he's more infamous than famous. The design of him is just bad. Why give him massive buck teeth? Why put him in a giant neon orange highlighter livery? Just no. Number 12, Rosie. A character that does become a bit more integral as the seasons go on, but she's introduced as a generic blank slate character who's seen as a bit of a tomboy and has a weird stalker obsession with Thomas. Not a great way to introduce female characters to a target audience. Number 11, Hank. A good episode, he's a very unique engine, but again, he's only in one episode and we never see him again. The only reason he's higher up is because he had more dialogue and was in a story that didn't entirely suck. Number 10, Proteus. Okay, I can hear it now. How can you put Proteus above Hank? The idea of Proteus is something that is stuck in fandom's heads for many, many years. The mystery of him is what makes him such a good character. We don't know much about him and we want to find out more. With the other characters I've mentioned, we don't really care if we find out more. But we want to find out more about Proteus. Where did he work? Who did he work with? How did he disappear? Is he even real? Does he have magical powers? These are all things that run around in my head and have caused me to start trying to write my own movie about Proteus and try and put him into some sort of canon in my own head. And the fact that a character that I've only seen a total of twice has got me really thinking, it just shows the impact that he as a character had on me. Number nine, Molly. I swear I didn't mean to put both of the yellow engines together. It just kind of happened. Purely by the fact that Molly is in more episodes and has slightly more to do in them is how she gets higher up on the list. I wish that her yellow livery was a bit more toned down, maybe more of a golden color because it makes it look very cheap. Those models were definitely not cheap. They were like upwards of about five grand a pop to make. And I do think her character was given a really raw deal. She had potential to be a really strong female character in the same vein as Emily going forward. They dropped the ball with her. Number eight, Madge. I like this snubbed nose Laurie. She wasn't involved much, but the story she was involved in were all right. I loved her chemistry with Duncan. I loved that she was more mature. By mature, I mean in terms of common sense, not that she was like old. The squandered potential is what really stopped her from getting higher up on the list. I would have loved to have seen more of Madge. I would have loved to have seen more about her, create some more stories around her. It was another opportunity to develop a strong female character and it was squandered. 
You could have paired her up with Elizabeth. That would have been a really interesting dynamic. I might actually write a story about that. Number seven, with three videos in a row, I have talked about how much I love this character. His livery, his design, what he means in terms of not judging a character by their appearance or how they smell and all this kind of stuff. He's a great character. He has a considerable impact on the show going forward. Even in one of the worst films by the fandom, Misty Island Rescue, he is involved in the outcome of the plot. My opinion might change after I watch Misty Island Rescue, I don't know. But from the episodes that I saw in the Brenner era, he seemed alright. He was an underdog character. We always loved the scrappy little guy. Number 6. Stanley a lot of people see him as just another engine that Thomas has to have a beef with, but there's reasons why he's as high up in the list as he is. Number one, he had his own movie to flesh out some of his character. Number two, it was a good dynamic that he had with Thomas, and even in season 12 with Gordon in his episodes. Number three, he was voiced by Pierce frickin' Brosnan. There is no denying that during this spate in the hit era, a lot of people knew who Stanley was. They just dropped the ball with him. Number five, Mighty Mac. Again, the squandered potential with Mighty Mac. The whole Siamese twin engine thing. There's so many stories that they could have done around Mighty Mac that would have been great. He is still involved with the narrow gauge engines right up until the end of season 12. He was a great character, he had a unique design. I just feel bad because of the squandered potential. Number four, Freddy. A character that I didn't expect to like as much as I did. I know that I say that a lot of the older engines on Soldar are meant to be the typecast of wise and revered, not dumbasses. Freddy kind of bucks the trend for me. I like that Freddy is a bit more forgetful, that he's not quite all there in the smoke box. It shows a different side to older engines in this series because they were being portrayed either in the classic series as wise and revered or from the hit era onwards as old, pathetic weirdos. Freddy just kind of reminded me of your crazy uncle or crazy grandpa who would tell you stories that you had a feeling had a hint of tall tale about them, but you still wanted to listen because they were funny. Freddy thinks he's younger than he is. He's still got the youthful spirit, but his body just can't match up to that. He was a great character and I think not having him around was a real crime. Number three, Dennis, a diesel engine making this list. He bucked a trope that was being hammered home in this era. All diesels, Bar Salty and Mavis are bad. There was no gray areas or complexities. Dennis had that. He wasn't a bad engine. He was just a lazy He didn't want to do his work. We all can feel like that in the working world where we just go, I can't be sacked today. So he tries to get Thomas to do his work for him. That bites him in the backside. But the difference between this Diesel and many of the other ones is that he learned a lesson. He grew from it. Whether we find out if he wound up being a more responsible and hardworking engine, we never get the answer to that. But I would like to think that he was. Number two, Rocky. Introduced in one of arguably the worst episodes of the entire run of Thomas and Friends, and other people's opinions, but he does become a pivotal character. For some reason, they got rid of the breakdown cranes from the classic era. I know, I know, they do make a comeback, but at that point, no one knew where the breakdown cranes went, and all we had was Harvey. So Rocky became the spotlight crane engine. He was given somewhat of a personality, had to be involved a lot more often, because he was the only breakdown crane that was large enough to lift engines like Gordon. And the number one new character introduced in the hit era of Thomas and Friends is Hector. Anybody who watched the classic era reviews here will probably be wondering why a truck is at the top of the list. Because I didn't include a lot of rolling stock in the classic era countdown. But this one had such a great character arc and it was expanded upon that I couldn't have him not at number one. His design was unique, his character was unique, his story was fascinating, and I was craving more stories with him. That shows you what type of character Hector was and the impact that he had on the fandom. Lots of people make stories about Hector now because they have the same burning questions that I do. But it doesn't mean that his introduction lacked any information. It's not like Rosie or Billy where you have the questions about them and they never get any type of answer. When Billy is being an aggressive little a-hole to Thomas, you don't find out why he's being aggressive. With Rosie, you don't know anything about her other than she is just blank slate character who stalks Thomas. With Hector, we find out that Hector is a horrible truck. He doesn't like people or engines being around him. But we find out 
why he's scared. He doesn't want to be shunted because it's something that's never happened to him before. And we relate to that for anybody who's went through a first. It's terrifying. And sometimes it's not as bad as we make it out to be. And then once he's gotten over that fear, you realise that he's very clever. He gives wise words of advice to James, who of course doesn't take those words in because he's James, but he knows more and is a voice of reason. A truly unique character, and in my opinion, the best character in the hit era of Thomas and Friends. And that's my list. Who would you say is your favourite character in the hit era? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, keep on chugging.